Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at adding a Turnitin assessment to an Ultra course. Um, so to get started, I'm just in an Ultra course now. And I'm just going to hit the uh, plus icon where I want my assessment to go. So I could add it um, anywhere in the course where I can find this little plus icon. So I'm going to add it here, hit plus and choose content market. Then in the content market area, I'm just going to go down to the bottom where we've got Turnitin for Ultra Courses Only and select this. And here we have the area where I can start creating my Turnitin assignment. So I'll give it a name. Um, so this is for marketing with social media reports remember with your naming conventions make them super unique and really relevant so that students understand what it is uh, and also you understand we've seen in many cases where everyone calls it learning outcome one um, but if there's several units and five learning outcome ones it can be really hard for students to know which is which and they can sometimes submit to the wrong one so make sure that the title is really really clear concise um, so I will say this is marketing with social media report um, L01 rather than just L01. And I can even make it clearer in the assignment instructions. So um, upload a PDF and this report is for X unit, uh, you know, whatever description you need in there to kind of make this clear in your instructions. Uh, your max grade, um, so depending on how your team marks, I know some people do 321, 210, some people mark out of 100, totally up to you. I'm going to follow the 210 system here and just put a 2 in there. My start date, that is quite simple. When do I want students to be able to see this and be able to start submitting? So I'll just leave that as is. However, I'm going to change my due date um, and I'll give myself until the 14th. Uh, and my students until the 14th. And I can even change the time as well. I can select a time uh, and let's say five o'clock. So I can type as well. Uh, there we go. I can use the, that to choose the time there and close that down. So they've got until five o'clock. The feedback release date, that's quite simply what it says on the tin there. When are students going to be able to see their feedback? So we've said that the due date is the 14th at five. I'm going to give myself a week to mark all the students work uh, and we'll say uh, until the 21st so I've got a week after they've all submitted and um, let's do it in the morning let's um, say for 10 and I'll change that as well so there we are so at 10 uh, on the 21st they will see their feedback I can now also allow optional settings in here so if I choose optional settings I can choose whether or not they're being submitted to the standard paper repository. So for a standard paper repository, that's us looking um, for similarity reports and allowing this to be checked against for similarity. So if um, they need to remediate or if there's a similar report later on or in the next year, or we're worried that students might copy off each other, we want to have this selected. You can also choose do not store the submitted papers. Um, so this can be done for remediation, or it can also be done for anything where you're submitting images um, to, to turn it in, uh, because images cannot be checked for plagiarism. You can also allow submission of any file type. Um, so again, if you are needing uh, images, presentations that have very little text, you can choose this as well. Um, you can allow late submissions by default. We, we tend to, but you can turn this off if you want to. Uh, anyone who does submit late, it will be marked with a red late um, submission word there. You can choose to attach your rubric or a grading form as well. Um, and you can then select from either a list that you may have created, whether in original or in ultra courses, you can choose from that list, or you can even launch the rubric manager there to create one, but we won't be going over that in this video. So we're just going to turn off the rubric there. You can choose what you're comparing against. So um, you can choose to have all of these turned on or off. It's completely up to you. By default, um, if you are checking for plagiarism, you'll have these all turned on. 
However, if you are not checking for plagiarism, you can actually have these turned off if that is something that you wish to have. Uh, when are we going to generate our similarity reports? Um, so by default, it usually is selecting generate reports immediately and students can resubmit until the due date. This essentially means that um, until the due date passes, students can just keep submitting over and over. Uh, and this is ideal if they, when they first submit, they have a high um, similarity score. Uh, they can actually go in and edit their work and submit again to try and lower that score down. So that's something that we do like. We like students to be able to have that option to edit their work. If the due date has passed, um, they will actually only be able to submit once. Um, so if they haven't submitted at all, and then the due date passes, they can only submit once. They can't keep going and editing their work because they've already submitted it late. So they only get one option. You can change this, however. So you can choose generate, reports immediately and students cannot resubmit, meaning they only have one option, one chance to submit the re their report. Um, or you can choose that they can, um, the, ge the reports only generate on the due date. So uh, for this one, it would be on the, um, the 14th at five, the report would be there, but students could resubmit, they just don't see their score. By default though, we like to go down the middle so that they can see their score and then they can resubmit and edit their work before the um, due date. You can also allow students to view the reports. So by default, we tend to have this turned on at the college, but you can, if you want, have it turned off um, if you don't want them to see the score or if, uh, if um, you're not necessarily looking for the score yourself. So as we were saying earlier, if you're doing posters or presentations where there's not a lot of text, you're not really checking for plagiarism, you don't need to have it turned on. Um, but for any kind of thing where you are, it, it is quite handy to have it turned on. Um, excluding bibliographic materials, you can turn this on here uh, if you want. Same with quoted as well, quoted materials. If students have quoted anything rightly, you can have these excluded from the score. Um, you can also have them not excluded at this point and you can exclude them later when you're actually viewing the student's work. Um, so it's completely up to you. By default, I tend to have these two turned on, and if I need to, I can turn them off later um, and, and change those. We also have small sources. Um, so this is done on a word count or a percentage basis. So you could say um, if there's a certain term or expression that does come up a lot, you and you know it's about 10 words long, you could uh, exclude that so that it won't be picked up. And the same could be done for percentage. You could say, oh, if it's 3%, um, it, it doesn't count. So it would get rid of any small matches uh, that you wouldn't need to exclude later. Um, by default, I tend to turn this off and do it as a case by case, look through the student reports and see whether or not that small source is so insignificant that I can exclude it myself. And the last thing you can do is save these additional these settings um, for future use. So if you know that this is kind of something that you're gonna always um, use, you can save these. However, um, depending on what you're asking the students to do, case by case, it's go it could be quite different. One could be a report, one could be a poster, um, and, a, and a poster will not, uh, you're not really looking for your um, similarity in a poster. So you would have to have that turned off. So uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to save these for, for quickness. If you know that all your turn and assignments are gonna be the same kind of format, save them, hit submit, and you know that for future, you don't need to go through these um, additional settings and change them, they'll be the same. Um, but if you know that each time you do it, it is going to be slightly different and you're gonna to need to tweak it, maybe don't save them. Uh, and then you would just hit submit and you'll get this nice little uh, success message and it will take you back. And here we have now our um, Turnitin report that students will be able to go in and they will be able to submit and they'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to go in and mark this as well. So nice and easy, I uh, hope that helps.